Meghan Markle here. Today is June 7th, 2023. It is 3.56 a.m. I've been editing. I didn't feel like recording, but um, I stopped in the middle of my editing to record some stuff that I've already bookmarked since uh, yesterday when things were popping up regarding Harry's uh, court appearance. So I'm almost done with the editing. Okay, you know what? let's get to it because i do not have that much time and my son will be waking up slightly early today he's going somewhere all right so this is the first tweet i have a lot but this one i think is gonna be one or maybe two videos because this link i'm gonna go through it okay prince harry's devastating witness statement and full shame on the royal family shame on his pathetic absentee father shame on the entire british establishment for their crimes okay i'm gonna come back to that link i've shared that link on my community board already it's the witness statement that harry have produced for the court all right I've, i think there's like 55 pages or something like that all right so i decided to tackle it first okay yet he's having trouble backing anything up with actual evidence most of the stories discussed were already in the public domain well we don't fully know what goes in the court yet but if it's in the public domain this is one of the reasons he's bringing it to the court system so that it wasn't supposed to be in the public domain that's the thing let's see here okay how did the story thank you there it is how did it how did the story get in the public domain that's the whole point it was supposed to be private Oh my god the logic okay why don't you actually read the live report from the trial okay lawyers don't file lawsuit and waltz into court without evidence stop believing the coding toxic british flag exactly all uh, right i'm not the lawyers don't go and everything you said in court you have to produce evidence why are you saying it you don't just say nonsense without evidence Okay, let's see here. Harry is also laying out exactly who knew about each particular issue. If MGN can prove they didn't get a particular story by illegal means, then where did the story come from if only a limited number of individuals knew the information? Have you not read anything from the court case today? Okay, uh, stop spreading lies. Okay, let's go back. Uh, this is responding to this tweet here. Okay, if the royal family was so bad, why is it only one person complaining? Because he's the one who have the guts. The guts. Everyone is afraid. Okay? Uh, celebrities is like a crocodile. If you use it for a short term, fame and financial gain, it's only a matter of time before it bites you in the ass. Well, they've been doing it since he was a child. Okay? So when is it going to stop? And they still haven't leave him alone. So he needs to do something about it. All right, did Harry have a choice? Thank you. All right, you have a government institution that human beings are born into and paraded to the world just a few hours after birth for the amusement of the world and their likeness is used to push newspapers and merchandise their entire life. Don't worry about, okay, don't worry about what? Don't worry about celebrities. Trust when I tell you that child actor have a better term of employment than your government human form. <laughs> human form. Uh, you know what there's a lot of speculation going on there's a video that i saw here this one let's see what he says here you're gonna see uh a screenshot of some sort all right Let, i want to listen to it and then go to the article or the witness statement that harry produced for the court 
A free press, a free press is essential to our democracy. But much of our press isn't actually very free at all. Just three companies control 71% of national newspaper circulation. <laughs> and five companies control 81% of local newspaper circulation. This unhealthy sway of a few corporations and billionaires shapes and skews the priorities and the worldview of powerful sections of the media. And it doesn't stop with the newspapers, <laughs> on and offline. Print too often sets the broadcast agenda, even though it is wedded so firmly to the Tories politically and to corporate interests more generally. The British press is the least trusted in Europe, including non-EU countries like North Macedonia and Serbia. Just let that sink in for a moment, that there is this degree of scepticism and mistrust of so many newspaper titles. The owners and editors of most of our country's newspapers have dragged down standards so far that their hard-working journalists are simply not trusted by the public. And that is a travesty. Mm -hmm. For all the worry about new forms of fake news, and we've heard plenty of that, we've ignored the fact that most of our citizens think our newspapers churn out what they believe to be fake news every day, day in, day out. It's not much of a surprise, then, that in the last four years, one political earthquake after another has been missed by most of our media. Wow. I would love to listen to him some more. He makes so much sense. Yep, like when you hear some of the byline uh, journalists talking, they're letting people know exactly what's going on in their country. They, they get the minuscule of, you know, fraction of what the other nonsense that the others are spreading. Uh, so let's go into that. There's so much to pile up into this. If you guys want me to come back to this thread after I read uh, that, you know, make sure you put timestamp. All right, this is very important, but this one, the link that she shared is more important. All right, the link will be in the description. All right, so there it is here. They are about, let's see here, I don't know if I'm going to read all of them, 55 pages. Okay, HRH Duke of Sussex is the claimant and Miro Group Newspaper Limited, defendant. Witness statement of Prince Harry Duke of Sussex. I, Prince Harry Duke of Sussex, of address available to the trial judge, all right, so not to the public, will state as follows. I make this statement in support of my claim for damages and other remedies against MGN Limited, the publishers of the Daily Mirror, uh, the People, and the Sunday Mirror newspapers. Two, the facts and matters set out in this witness statement derived from my own knowledge and are true except where I indicate that the information derives from a third party, in which case it is true to the best of my knowledge and belief. This witness statement was prepared by my solicitors following a series of video calls with them. In this witness statement, I refer to documents which are listed at the end of the statement. These include 50 newspapers articles published by the defendant's newspapers which contain private and confidential information relating to me and my associates which was not publicly known and which I now understand might have been obtained unlawfully by the defendant along with documents that have been disclosed in the course of my claim. All right, four, I was born into the British royal family on 15 September 1984. To my father, can, oh my goodness, can you imagine that you're writing this to the, it sounds like a fairy tale kind of thing. Is it, uh, uh, is it believable kind of thing? But it's all true though. Okay, I was born into the British royal family on 15 September 1984 to my father, King Charles III and my mother, Diana princess of wealth i'm currently fifth in line to the throne i swear this alone it sounds unbelievable but it's true okay i was educated in the uk at lord grove school and eton college i then underwent officer training at the royal military academy sandhurst where i was commissioned as a cornet into the blues and royals and then the army air corps i served in the army between 2005 and 2015 stationed primarily in the uk 
but also posted to Afghanistan between December 2007 and February 2008 and between September 2012 and January 2013. Since leaving the Army, I have remained closely involved with the armed forces. 5. Following the departure from the military, I became a full-time working member of the royal family. Part of my role involved representing my late grandmother, Queen Elizabeth II, at official engagement and charity events in the UK and across the world. I also launched various projects alongside my brother and his wife with particular focus on mental health. 6. I met my wife, Megan, in 2016. We were married at St. George Chapel, Windsor Castle in May 2018. Together, we have represented the monarchy at world engagement both in the UK and overseas. 7. Our son Archie was born in May 2019. We live at Fragmore Cottage in the home park of Windsor Castle up until 2020 when Megan and I reluctantly decided to step back from our full-time role as senior members of the royal family and split our time and work between UK and North America. In large part, this was due to the constant intrusion. The reason for living is now documented in court documents. In large part, this was due to the constant intrusion and siding of hatred and harassment by the tabloid press into every aspect of our private lives, which had a devastating impact on our mental health and well-being. We were also very concerned for the security and safety of our son. <clears throat> Eight, I now live in California with my wife, son, and daughter, Little Bet, who was born. Oh my goodness certain things bring some weird chill down my spine just reading this okay i now live in california with my wife son and daughter little bet who was born in june 2021 my relationship with the tabloid press now it is no secret that i have had and continue to have a very difficult relationship with the tabloid press in the uk and my experience as a member of the royal family, each of us get cast into a specific role by the tabloid press. You start off as a blank canvas while they work out what kind of a person you are and what kind of a problem and temptation you might have. They then start to edge you toward playing the role or roles that suit them best and which sells as many newspapers as possible, especially if you are the spare to the air, you then either the playboy prince, the failure, the dropout, or in my case, the thicko, the cheat, the underage drinker, okay, the irresponsible drug taker, the list goes on. As a teenager in my early 20s, I ended up feeling as though I was playing up to a lot of the headlines and stereotypes that they wanted to pen on me, mainly because I thought that if they are printing this rubbish about me and people were believing it, I may as well do the crime, so to speak. I was a downward spiral whereby the tabloid will constantly try to coerce me a damaged young man into doing something stupid that will make a good story and sell a lot of newspaper. Looking back at it now, such behavior on their part is utterly vile. And this is the thing that they were trying to do to him when Megan was leaving the award ceremony. All right, they uh, yell at some crazy stuff and they want Harry to uh, react. All right, 11. Whilst they would, of course, report on my successes in life, it seems to me that they took far greater pleasure in knocking me down time and time again. This extended to my relationship. I always felt as if the tabloid wanted me to be single. There's the thing. The squad been saying that. Okay? Always felt as if the tabloid wanted me to be single as I was much more interesting to them and so more newspapers. Whenever I got into a relationship, they were very keen to report the detail but will then very quickly seek to try and break it up by putting as much strain on it and creating as much distrust as humanly possible as I shall go into in more detail later in this statement. This twisted objective is still pursued to this day even though I am now married. Yeah, they're trying to break them up. Yeah. Okay, when <laughs> I'm telling you, I think I was right again. I know some of you came after me and said no. Okay, Harry quickly put on the ring. 
he quickly did that before they mess it up. And I also said, okay, there are some things he didn't tell Megan, so Megan did not know. I know you get there are some new subscribers who probably will come after me on that, but for some reason, I believe that whatever nonsense I put in my head, I truly believe that. But anyway, let's continue with that. Okay, 12. Whenever I have been in a relationship, I have always tried to be the best partner that I possibly could, but every woman has her limit. Unfortunately, they are not just in a relationship with me, but with the entire tabloid press as the third party. At no point did I have a girlfriend or a relationship with anyone without the tabloid getting involved and uh, ultimately trying to ruin it using whatever unlawful means at uh, their disposal again i will go into this in more detail later in my statement as i'm editing this video this portion here made me realize uh, made me think of uh, the left behind royals like uh, william and kate's children and all the other kids within the royal family so anyone or let's say the the male who possibly will have a potential wife or something like that. So these are the things anyone who is willing to marry in the royal family, there's a possibility this type of intrusion might inflict it in you. So I, in some way, I know uh, I had a, a little discussion in the comment section in one of my videos regarding that where I was saying it's a 50-50 chance or whatever, but Harry is put i think his main goal despite what i've said before it's not like i am changing my mind or anything i still believe what i said in the other video but there's always different branch aspect of things when i say certain things i don't know hopefully some of you catch or uh, understand my point of view there's always different branches but uh, the thing is that harry wants to be heard he wants people to know what he's been to and some of the things he's putting out there, I think these are things to get off his chest. Let people know because the tabloid have been writing nonsense about him. He wants people to know the truth. Okay. The ultimate goal is, is to know the truth. But, um, yeah, I don't know. This it reminds me or uh, made me think of the younger royals who don't know what's going on or they don't even know they marry within royalty or anything like that because they're born into it they i don't know so i think heavy is sort of looking out for those uh leftover behind royals but the adults okay like william and possibly many others but Anne already know this is solid Anne knows exactly what she has uh and she's not pretending this is why i like her but uh, the other royals some of them seems like they don't understand reality all right but um heavy is making this statement out in public i don't know whatever uh not only to put the truth out there but to set the record straight i guess but anyway whether he wins or loses, i don't think he really cares I really don't think he really cares, but it would be good for him to win. But there's so many layers into things. He, uh, something solid and concrete, evidence, physical, and things like that. And there's a possibility they might even throw it out because of timing, all of this. All right. So let, I could go on and on, but let's go back to the uh, original recording because I still have some parts that I need to record still. All right. So let's finish with that one. 13, of course, I accept. I accept my public role within the royal family and know that every time I put a suit and tie in order to carry out an official engagement, I am going to get photographed because most of the press are always there. Even if I get popped on the way there or on the way back, then that's absolutely fine too because it's expected. But this is the line that he keep on saying, private and, and public okay when he's in public he's fine with everything but when he's private doing things with his wife his kids and stuff stay out of his way okay this is where privacy came into play all right but if the next day i want to go out and take my dog for a walk i will expect some level of privacy that i mean i was right from the get-go i've always said that i mean of course many of you know this that as well but 
anyway let's continue which unfortunately does not and never has existed for me despite the common misconception i was no more than five percent funded by the taxpayers while i was working royal and the uk yet it felt as though the tabloid press thought that they own me absolutely and deserve to know everything there is to know about me my my life my movement and lives of those people who came into into my orbit Okay, this part here. I was no more than 5%, 5% funded by the taxpayers. This is where he had to ration in his, you know, his going shopping at T, was it T, TJ Max or something like that? TK, that's it, TK Max. All right, 14. They also. There also seems to be a real blurring of the lines in terms of what is in the public interest and what is of interest of the public. The tabloid concentrated on salacious stories about my relationship and so on to satisfy the latter while appearing to completely ignore the former as a mean of justifying their intrusion. I simply don't understand and never have how the inner private details of my relationship, for example, could have anything to do with the well-being of society or the running of the country and therefore be in the public interest or indeed how the use of voicemail interception and other unlawful information gathering techniques to uncover such private information could be either. I obviously understand why my relationship might be of interest to millions of tabloid readers, but that is something entirely different. What I complain of here is illegal or unlawful, and that is something which I feel incredibly strongly about. That I truly believe him because every chance that he gets, he makes you to mention that. Okay, not just in a personal capacity but as part of the role i have always tried to take as my duty to stand up to things which are wrong and the public uh and the public or people without the same resources should not have to accept or undergo this is where he's standing standing up for the little people okay it, it 15 it even got to the stage where the tabloid will routinely publish articles about me that were often wrong but interspersed with a snippet of truth Okay, so this is where they put some part that issue, which I now think were most likely gleaned from voicemail interception and or unlawful information gathering. This create an alternative and distorted version of me and my life to the general public. It's almost the same thing they did with uh, Megan's letter. They grab it, they distort it slightly, but yet they put the, the context of it content of it being those people that i have to serve and interact with as part of my role in the royal family to the point where any of the thousand of people that i met or was introduced to on any given day could easily have gone you know what you're an idiot i've read all the stories about you and now i'm now going to stab you this extended to every new place that i went to whether it be a classroom at school or a new course or in the army i always wondered when walking into a room of unknown people whether they had read all these stories and what judgment they had already formed based on what they read in the tabloid so i'm not sure if i'm gonna explain this thought properly so you guys could understand it feels like because the many of the uh, how do you call the royal voters already put out there that some of the leaks are coming within the royal family much of the negativity towards the couple is coming from within the royal family the royal family and staff of the royal family are the ones that are very often leaking these stories to the press so what i get from this here is like they're sending harry out there to meet le world leaders, do all sort of things. And at the same time, they're undermining him to, you know, telling, you know, leaking information to the voters to write some sort of a negative uh, headlines about him. So to sort of undermine him and then for world leaders to not somewhat take him seriously. Does that make sense? It's like they're playing double sword kind of thing here. They're sending him out there, or maybe at that time the queen was there. Uh, they, uh, the queen is sending Harry out there to represent her and things like that. But meanwhile, 
others within the institution is giving negative information to the tabloid to write about him. So world leaders will not take him seriously. Does that make sense in a way? I don't know if I make sense, but this is what I get from it. But meanwhile, Harry is a bright man and probably asked the right question whenever they sent him out there to, uh, you know, somewhere overseas to represent the queen and always come with good reporting. And uh, they don't see him that way once they get to know him. I don't know if I make sense with that. But anyway, it crossed my mind. I don't even think if I explain it properly. I'm sorry, but it crossed my mind. <laughs> my goodness, 16. Whenever advantage people claim I had by walking into a room as Prince Harry was immediately flipped on its head because I was facing judgment and opinion based on what had been reported about me, true or not. I expected people to be thinking he's obviously going to fail this test because he's a thicker. <laughs> if you were one of the examiners, uh, for the regular commission board, for instance, then you are going to expect me to screw up as you've already made an opinion before even meeting me based on the tabloid report. It means that I felt that I never went in at the same level as everybody else because the spotlight was, was always on me. 17. I generally feel that uh, in every relationship that I've ever had, be that with friends, girlfriends, with family, or with the army, there's always been a third party involved, namely the tabloid press. Having seen me grow up from a baby being born into the contractual relationship without any choice and scrutinize my every move, the tabloid have known the challenges and mental health struggles that I have had to deal with throughout my childhood and adult life and for them to then play on that and use it to their own advantage, I think is well criminal. <laughs> Even what they did to Megan as well. They mark her, do all of this crazy stuff when she came out to say her mental issues. Okay, my associate, 18. During the relevant period, I was in regular contact and often exchange voicemail messages with the following individuals. A H R H, the Prince of Wales, my brother, he is now first in line to the throne and due to his position, the press have always been very interested in him. As brothers, we naturally discuss personal aspects of our lives as we trusted each other with the private information. I'm sorry, I'm laughing to this because now his name is on the paper. <laughs> If they, if he's leaking information, once uh, the tabloid come in and try to defend themselves, and they're gonna be forced to say who was giving them information. But anyway, let's listen. Okay, as brothers, we naturally discuss personal aspect of our lives as we trusted each other with the private information we shared. We will often speak over the phone and regularly left voicemails for one another containing very private and sensitive information about our private, family, and professional lives. We will discuss our personal relationship, education, and careers as well as social arrangement over the telephone and voicemail and voicemails. I am aware that my brother was also a victim of phone hacking and unlawful information gathering. B. Princess Diana, my mother. This is where sometimes, you know, from an outsider, uh, when you hear this, my uh, Princess Diana, my mother, it's like, could that be true? Or, you know, that fantasy, that illusion of things. But anyway, she is his mother. Oh. You know, may she rest in peace. Let's continue. We were obviously very close up until her death in 1997. We were in regular telephone contact when we were not together, especially as I boarded at school. Private information relating to me will have been present in voicemail left on her phone by members of my family or the royal household. C uh, H R H King Charles the Third, my father. Again, there's that illusion of things. During the relevant period, my father and I were in regular contact by telephone. He was first in line to the throne during this period, and of great interest to the press due to his position. My private information will have been present on voicemail left on his landline phone by other members of my family or the royal household. The sense that I'm getting here, 
this is sort of arranging things okay even though we do know there were some unlawful gathering of things he is also positioning the tabloid okay the people he's suing to actually name names where they're getting their information where the royal household they're gonna name names of people from the royal household and this is the position that i'm getting here he's arranging balancing uh placing the tabloid you're gonna have to name some names all right put those uh royal household in an odd position he's not naming them as the source but he's just letting them know the people who's around him the people he have certain conversation with that those information uh been putting on the tabloid am i explaining it correctly but let's continue frank shen kid my maternal grandmother oh that's the name francis shen kid oh I, I didn't know that my maternal grandmother the press were always interesting in her as they were and anyone that spoke regularly to my mother hoping to find out information about her and her sons chelsea davy a former okay e chelsea davy a former girlfriend of mine we met in about early 2004 and uh, were in a relationship which continues on and off until around mid-2010 our relationship was long distance for the majority of the time we were together with chelsea and i often living in different countries so we rely on communicating by phone a lot we naturally spoke about all type of personal matters, including all aspects of our relationship, and this was often through voicemail. As my girlfriend, I trusted Chelsea with the most private of information and visa and, and vice versa. Okay, visa versa. Okay, vice versa. F. Mark Dyer or Marco, as I call him a former royal equerry uh, and still a close friend of mine during the relevant period we communicate regularly on the phone leaving each other voicemail about my private and family life my education my career mark was a key figure in my childhood and throughout adolescence he was privy to uh, to lots of private and sensitive information about me my family and the royal household mark will also have exchange voicemail with others about my private affairs okay g helen asprey my private secretary she was intrinsically involved in all aspects of my private family and professional life and was responsible for making arrangement for me due to her role she knew lots of private information about me i was in regular phone contact with helen about all aspects of my life and during the relevant period we exchanged frequent voicemails helen will have also exchange voicemails with others containing my private information such as my day-to-day -day plans and whereabouts my private affair and issue relating to the royal household <coughs> okay h uh guy perry an uh, entrepreneur and a friend of mine we have been friends since childhood and have been in regular telephone contact since we were adolescents. The press were interesting in Guy because of his role friendship with me and my brother. Guy and I would often speak over the phone and regularly left voicemails for one another containing private information during the relevant period. We will tell each other about every private and sensitive things uh, going on in both our professional and our personal and professional lives. I, Jimmy Luther Pinkerton, my former private secretary, he held this role from 2005 to 2013. He was also my brother's private secretary during this period. Jimmy was involved in almost all aspects of my private and family and professional life, and he was responsible for making arrangements for me relating to these matters. He knew lots of private information about me, such as my day-to-day -day plans, family matters, and issues relating to the royal household. I was in regular phone contact with Jamie and I, uh, Jamie, and frequently exchanged voicemail with him. Jamie will have also exchanged voicemail with others containing private information about me and my affairs. Okay, J. Alexander Shah uh, Potaffer. Okay, I hope I pronounce it right. So if I don't know me, uh, known to me as Tiggy, a close companion and confident. 
she was my guardian during childhood and uh, we have a very close relationship as my nanny during childhood she played a central role in my life during the relevant period and will have exchanged voicemails with others regarding all aspects of my life including my whereabouts health education and my family life as i got older and our and our relationship continues i was in regular phone contact with tiggy and uh, became her son's godfather hmm, very interesting okay we often exchange voicemails which contain sensitive and private information about both of our private life due to the level of trust between us i regularly talk to her about things i will not otherwise share outside a close group of friends Okay, Paddy Everson, my father's former communication secretary, he held this role from 2004 to 2013 and was the official spokesman for my brother during this period. Given the nature of his role, he knew a lot of private information about me and would have exchanged voicemails with others concerning my private information, such as my day-to-day -day plans and whereabouts, my private affairs and issues relating to the royal household. Okay, Thomas and Skip, a school friend of mine during the relevant period, Thomas and I were in regular phone contact and exchanged frequent voicemails uh, about our education and our family and private lives. We spent a lot of time together and would often leave voicemails on one another making uh, social arrangements. Okay, Jim, Jamie Moray. Wells, an entrepreneur and close childhood friend. My brother and I spent a lot of time with Jamie and we will leave each other voicemails regarding our whereabouts and making plans for social arrangement as well as talking about our private and family lives. Okay, and HRH, the princess of Wells, my brother's wife, uh oh, <laughs> oh, they mentioned her too. Uh, wife Catherine and my brother started dating in 2003. We occasionally exchange voicemails in which we discuss private and sensitive matters regarding our family and personal lives. We will also make plans for social arrangement over voicemail. Hmm. Mm. I'm thinking of other things, but let me not speculate. N uh, not in the sense of anything else. In terms of uh, knowing what Harry will be doing, who uh, Harry is seeing, and then, you know, things that we know that she didn't even try to help Megan or anything like that. But anyway, let's continue. Oh, Natalie uh, Penkham. Penkham is sports television presenter and a close friend of mine. We met in around 1999 and attended various social events together during the relevant period. We often le left voicemails for one another to make arrangements for where we, we should meet and what our plans were. We also discuss our private lives on the phone and in voicemail. Okay, there's P. Caroline Flack, the late television presenter, was a friend of mine. We met in around 2009 and during the relevant period, we attended a couple of social events together. The press were always interesting in Caroline because of her job as a well-known presenter for a brief period. I was in phone contact with Caroline and we exchanged voicemails regarding our personal lives and to make arrangement for meetups. Okay. So he names all the possible people who could have, you know, leak information. Well, not leak, but the people he has, he exchanged information with. Okay. So this, that's that. Okay. My use of my mobile phone and voicemail. All right. 19. I can't recall exactly when I was first issued with a mobile phone by the institution, which is the firm, but I think it was when I first went to Eton when I was still a minor. I have never been the name account holder of any mobile that I have had and have almost never received a phone bill. As I remember when, uh, I think it was in uh, Spare, where he said he never carried a, uh, a key in his life. So it was strange to him when he moved to California. He has his own key now. All right. As far as I was aware, this was dealt with by the institution, presumably by security purposes, although that now seems rather ironic. <laughs> All right. That reminds me of what they did to Megan's phone. All right. She couldn't retrieve any information. They did some stuff to her phone, but yet they have uh, information about her. But anyway, different story now. 
20, as I was very heavily involved with various commitments during the relevant period, whether it was during my time at school or at Sandhurst, during my career in the Army or afterwards, when I was undertaking engagement as a senior member of the royal family, I would constantly be leaving and receiving voicemails as text messaging was much less common back then, it was my main means of communicating with my family, including my mother, who I was obviously extremely close, especially at that time. My girlfriend at the time, my friends, members of the royal household, and those I was working with. K21, okay, my voicemail will include incredibly private and sensitive information about my relationship my operational security and that of my family, my work both in the army and as senior member of the royal family, and also any plans that I had made uh, for my time off, including holidays and downtime with friends. They, they will also include incredible private and sensitive information about those with whom I associated. Okay, unusual mobile activity. Okay, 22. I remember on multiple occasions hearing a voicemail for the first time that wasn't new. Hmm. I remember on multiple occasions hearing a voicemail for the first time that wasn't new. Hmm. But I don't remember thinking that it was particularly unusual. I will simply put it down to perhaps a technical glitch as mobile phones were still relatively new back then or even just having to okay or even just having too many drinks the night before and having forgotten that i listened to it okay so when they let's say for instance i'm assuming if they hack his phone and they leave it as if it was new again so it appears to him it's a brand new message okay 23. I won't go into my voicemail unless the little envelope symbol flash flash up on my phone signaling to me that I had a new message. Yep, that's what they did. They finished listening to it and they put it as new again. Thinking that maybe Harry didn't listen to it yet. Okay, sometimes this symbol will vanish before I had a chance to listen to the voicemail. Wow, this is freaking scary. I don't know how long after they've been listening to that, the symbol vanished, presumably straight away. I also distinctively remember people saying to me, didn't you not get my voicemail on both a personal and a work-related level? I was like, no. And sometime I will go back into my voicemail to look for it, but still can't find it. <laughs> okay. I also received some miss missed call and hang up calls. Uh, but again, I don't remember thinking that they were particularly suspicious at the time, although I now understand their significance in terms of phone hacking. <laughs> 25. With the benefit of the knowledge I have now gained of the detail of how phone hacking took place, I believe that both mine and my associate voicemail messages were hacked by the defendant and that it used other unlawful means to obtain private information about me, including materials that has come from listening to live calls uh, I also made on my landline. Okay. Impact of MGN institu okay, intrusion into my life. Okay. 26. I'm only on page 8. All right, it's 4.35, okay. Uh, the f I'm going to read until one of my kids is up. The fact that the defendant journalists and those uh, in instructed on their behalf were listening in to private and sensitive voicemail at the level of detail discussed in the statement rather suggests that they could have heard they could have heard anything or anything. This is not only create a huge amount of distress, but created very, uh, very real security concern for not only me, but also everyone around me. I will say their action affected every area of my life. Okay, 27. It created a huge amount of paranoia in my relationship. I would become immediately suspicious of anyone that was named and a story about me, whether it was Mark Dyer, Tiggy, or her brother, Harry, for example. I felt that I couldn't trust any, anybody, which was an unlawful feeling for me, especially at such a young age, as I am uncovering the extent 
of the unlawful activities carrying out by MGN's journalists and senior executive toward me. I feel somewhat relieved to know that my pa paranoia toward my friends and family had, in fact, been misplaced, although feel sad for how much it impacted my adolescence. Okay, 28, in terms of the relationship with Chelsea, we had to conduct it over long distance, which is incredibly hard even without the frenzies interest from MGN journalists that we had to endure. I remember that whenever she flew into uh, Heathrow, I felt such concern about the, pa the possibility of her jumping into a taxi because someone from a defendant always seemed to know that she was coming. Wow. It is only since commencing this claim that I realized that MGN journalists were blagging her flight. What? Blagging her flight details so that, uh, so that we'll know exactly when she was going to arrive so they could have a photographers at the ready. I talk about this more in relation to some of the articles below. Uh, there's, I think the last couple pages have a list of, you know, reference that she's making that Harry makes reference to. And I think it, this is one of them. Okay. I wanted to be there to welcome her as any boyfriend would, but even that came with challenges. <laughs> Okay, 29. On one of Chelsea's first trip to the UK, I went to pick her up with my personal protection officer, uh, right, or PPOs, as I will call them throughout this statement. Uh, right, I walk into the, uh, I walk into the arrival hall with a baseball cap on and immediately spotted five separate paparazzi sitting on the benches with cameras and bags, their hands inside rock sacks and everyone else looking at me. I remember that someone was videoing me with one of those tiny little cameras uh, between their legs. I recall thinking, how on earth did they know I was going to be there? But now it's obvious. These kinds of incidents make me fear for our safety. That could be, yeah. Here we have five big, birdly and dodgy looking men with their hands in their pockets or and uh, rock sacks and satchels in a busy public place my security and i simply couldn't know whether they were uh, reaching for a camera or drawing some kind of a weapon <laughs> 30. Uh, that was the first and only time i went into the arrival hall at heathrow to collect chelsea <laughs> to collect <laughs> to collect chelsea for all future trips to Heathrow, I decided to sit in the car whilst my PPO will go and fetch her. <laughs> oh my God, what kind of term is that? <laughs> Collect and fetch. <laughs> I will, I'm sorry, I'm laughing at this. Okay, I will then get a text message, a text message from her saying, I've landed and I've said, that's great. So and so is in there. He's wearing such and such. The doors from the airport to the car park will then burst open and there would typically be five or six paparazzi literally running circle around Chelsea so much so that I can't even see her. Wow. He wanted to, those little moments many of us take for granted. Wow. That was her welcome to the UK and it happened constantly whenever she arrived here. On occasion, the paparazzi will be so aggressive in their pursuit of her that we will have to enlist the help of the airport police, which obviously detract from their main task to keeping the airport and the general public who use them safe. All right. Okay. Every time I was in a relationship or even a rumored relationship, that whole person, family, and often their friends would be dragged into the chaos and find themselves the subject of unlawful activity on their part of MGN. Uh, that's horrible for anyone. I can remember that at least one of the girlfriend told me she was one of me by her parents saying, is it really worth all the aggravation? Our relationship ended shortly after. Wow. That said, all right. Uh, there was nowhere that was off limit for the defendant's newspapers. There was no downtime or escape. I remember that whenever Chelsea and I went on a trip to Bazarido, a small island off the coast, the coast of Mozambique to try to get away from all the madness and 
uh, enjoy some peace and quiet. Journalists and photographers from NGN and, uh, and the other tabloid will literally turn up and book into the hotel before we got there. I now believe they had blacked out flight detail and hotel booking and or intercepted our voicemail. We were never on our own and able to enjoy each other's company away from prying eyes of the tabloid. This put a huge amount of unnecessary stress and uh, strain on our relationship. We could also never understand how private elements of our life together were finding their way into the tabloid. And so our circle of friends became smaller and smaller. Oh my goodness. This is sad. They remove people from their circle because they, you know, they probably thought they were leaking information about them. I remember finding it very hard to trust anyone. Yep, there it is. Which led to bouts of depression and paranoia. Of course, now that we know that this information was invariably obtained by unlawful means, these friendships were lost entirely unnecessarily, which is a matter of a huge regret for me. Okay, unfortunately, these factors led her to make a decision that a royal life was not for her, which was incredibly upsetting for me at the time. Wow. Okay, disclosure. Although my solicitors have advised me that it will not be appropriate for me to provide a warning commentary on each and every document disclosed by defendant in this statement, I have had opportunity to review them and would like to say that I am shocked and appalled at the sheer volume of payments made by MGN titles to private investigators who are known in this litigation to have used voicemail interception and other unlawful information gathering techniques to obtain private information about their targets for private information about me and my associates over a 10-year period from 1999 when I was still very much a minor to 2009. Okay, specifically, there are 135 separate payments for me and a further 154 for my associates, which I understand for my solicitor are huge numbers in the context of this litigation, especially considering that the defendant is known to have concealed and destroyed evidence, that's the thing, okay, of their wrongdoing on a, an industrial scale, okay, so they usually destroy the evidence, okay, and I now realize that my, uh, my acute paranoia of being constantly under surveillance was not misplaced after all. <laughs> okay, I was also shocked and disgusted to discover that my name and mobile number were in a contact list belong to known hacker Nick Berkeley, which is further proof that I was a victim of voice of voicemail interception and unlawful information gathering. The question now is how did they get his number to have it in the first place? That's a huge question here. All right, hacking it is another level, but to get it originally, how did they get it? How did they know this number belonged to Harry? And for them to proceed to do the next step, which is hacking and listening and all of that. Oh my goodness. Okay, additionally, I was upset to discover the amount of suspicious call data and the 13 private investigator payment uh, for Chelsea. Had she not been in a relationship with me, she would never have had to endure such horrific experience at the hands of MGN journalists. There are even eight private investigators payment made in relation to my mother, which I have only learned of since bringing my claim. This makes me feel physically sick. Wow. The letter they, um, I think in one of the videos, uh, one of the uh, people were talking about that. Okay, 38. While on the subject of my mother, I was even more shocked, disgusted, and appalled when I was known by my solicitor's three hands reading letter from her to the well known television personality, Michael Barrymore. They are dated 23 March, uh, 23 March, 25 April, and 2 June 1997, respectively, and convey my mother's concern for Mr. Barrymore's well being and kindly offering him a shoulder to cry on. 39. In this first letter, she said, quote, I did want to emphasize that I am here for you whenever it is very easy to pop around and see you or please telephone now. You have my number anytime. 
Okay, and the second letter, she said, I was devastated tonight to hear that the Daily Mirror have, okay, have been telephoning my office to ask detail about six meetings that are supposed to have been taking place between us. Nobody around me knew of our Sunday evening plan and I will never do anything to cause you any personal distress. And it only remains for me to say how deeply I how deeply sorry I am that what I consider to be a private precious matter has become public property. Wow. Okay. 40 and the third letter she said are you okay i'm okay i am concerned about i haven't heard uh i haven't heard from you for some time i hope the silence is good news i have had nightmare time in the tabloid i am here and uh, there's the number here if you need to talk all right there's the phone number here um all three letters were written during pierce morgan's editor's Mm, editorship of the Daily Mirror, and he even admits on page 122 of his book, <laughs> he's using some of Pierce Morgan's words from his book. Page 122 of his book entitled The Insider, The Private Diaries of a Scandalous D Decade that okay, TV comic Barry Moore has recently been treated in a clinic for booze and drugs addiction. And I've heard rumors that Diana had been secretly comforting him. Oh my God. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. One of the things I remember saying in one of the tweets, for Princess Diana to be, to have, to be in the state of mind, to quickly write a letter, okay, to confirm it's not her who's, you know, who's doing that. It's the state of mind to think, let me write a letter to assure him I'm not saying those kind of things. All right, so there it is. It come to uh, help Harry here, okay, and herself too. As the first and third letters confirmed that Mr. Barrymore had my mother's landline number, it is safe to assume that they were in contact over the phone, giving my mother's very hectic schedule in the month leading up to her death in 1997. I think it is also safe to assume that she will have been exchanging voicemail with Mr. Barrymore about his problems and their plans to meet up in light of what we have said in the second letter about being devastated to find out that the Daily Mirror had somehow discovered detail of their private meeting and being horrified at the thought of Mr. Barrymore thinking that she had leaked the detail together with Mr. Morgan's reference the, to secret meeting, I can only assume that this information had been obtained uh, via voicemail interception and other unlawful information gathering such as live landline tapping. Okay, so I'm gonna stop here. I'm gonna go to page, the next page will be page 11 or no page 12 so i'll start on this and uh, my kids gonna wake up soon there's gonna be noise so after everyone is gone to their respective places i'll continue with that okay so that's it for now please take a moment to subscribe like and share if you want to support this channel there's a paypal link and a cash app link in the description you could donate those who have donated thank you all right so that is it for now
we want we ask for forgiveness and uh, and please come back. for the better.